Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Dragon Age 2. As you can see, Hawk and Co. arrived to Kirkwall on this teeny tiny boat. Apparently they spent two weeks in the bottom of this thing, and the thought of that just makes me want to puke. But anyway, um, me, Mama, Bethany, and Abilene have made it. Unfortunately, we lost Carver, my brother, and Abilene's husband, Wesley, on the way. We lost them to the dark spawn, which was very unfortunate. But we have made it to Kirkwall. However, we are not out of the woods yet. After that harrowing boat journey, we now need to actually get inside the city. Uh, there are a lot of refugees here. And it does not appear anybody uh, is letting us in. So let's let's see what we can do about that, shall we? Get back to the crowd, you lot. Trying to bully your way through won't get you into Kirkwall any faster. But you do intend to let us in. <laughs> we have enough poor of our own in the free marches. We don't need you refugees piling up here like a midden's heap. Wow, this guy is friendly and caring. So what will happen to us? Why aren't we being allowed into the city? If it were up to me, I'd bar the gates and let you find somewhere Wow, else. this guy is a 10 out of 10 gem. But it's not. Some of you lot might have legitimate... A very compassionate man, city. it seems. They've assigned so to the front gate. Meredith wants us to sort you all out. Most of you are getting right back on your ships, though. Knight Commander Meredith? That's a Templar title. Why would a city guardsman answer to the Templars? We don't answer to her, but she's the power in Kirkwall. Don't know what would happen if the Viscount went against something she wanted, but he's sure never taken that chance. Wow, we got a little insight into the politics. Looks like it's the Chantry who actually runs this city, so that's good to know. Um, look, I need to get in. There must be someone in charge I can speak with. <sighs> yes, yes, always the same story. You want in, talk to Captain Yuald. I'm just here to keep you refuse from climbing the walls. All right, Captain Ewald. Goodbye, Guardsman Wright. I won't be missing you, that's for sure. Talk about refuse. I think, uh, I think you, you, you might fit that definition. Whoa, look at this entry. With all the, the carvings of the slaves. Wow. This place is grim. <laughs> I don't know if this place is any better than the dark spot. I guess no one's actively trying to kill us here, so that's an improvement. Were you familiar with every Templar in Lothering? How else was I supposed to know what Also, are they talking ride? right now? Is there a way for me to turn on subtitles for the, um, party banter? Okay, I think I might have turned on subtitles for party banter. I need to apologize in advance. The audio mix in this game is not great. I find that the dialogue is very... is not... Um, very loud, and so I'm, I'm straining to hear them at some point, so hopefully it's okay for you guys. We'll make sure we have those subtitles on, and I'll try to get the mix uh, as, as good as we can for the final product. But in the meantime, here we are in this very epic-looking square. Let us through, you flaming blighter. We're not staying in this pit. Then get back on your ship and leave. Kirkwall has no more room for refugees. The ship's already gone. We've paid good coin to get here. You and half of Ferelden. There's nothing I can do. The city is full. A guard told me differently. One of the guards said you were letting in people who have business in the city. That's right. We've seen you let lots of people through. Citizens and merchants that make it worth our while. I'll assume that you don't have any more coin than these gentlemen. We've been letting you Ferelden's in for months. You're too late. There's no more room. But we have family here. Doesn't that mean anything? I've heard claims like that a thousand times already, trust me. We'll find some ships to take you all back to Ferelden, eventually. Until then, you stay here. Be reasonable. Our uncle is Gamlin Amal. He knows we're coming. Surely someone could find him. Gamlin? I know that name. He's a nobleman here in the city. Our family has an estate. A nobleman? The only gamlin I know is a weasel who couldn't rub two coppers together. He comes back, I'll bring you to him. But I don't have time to... What? You gonna let them through? I didn't say anything about... We've been here for four days! They just got here! That's it! We're carving our way out of here! Men! Really? How could he think that's a good idea? Just kill all the guards and they'll just let you into the city? 
Like, what a dumb idea, guys. I know you're frustrated, but seriously? You think this is gonna work? Oh my. At least it's time for me to show off my cool tricks. We are making the square awfully bloody. As you can see, they definitely didn't tone down the blood effects from the first game. If anything, they popped that sucker up to 12. There's blood everywhere. In fact, two of the mods that we're using, we're using a very limited list of mods in this playthrough, so I want to keep the experience basically as vanilla as possible, but if you check our mod list down below, two of the mods we're using actually have to do with the blood effects. So our faces and our teeth, in particular, don't get too bloody. <laughs> Captain, are you alright? I am, no thanks to you. Where is everyone? Go find them. I want this kept under control. You have my thanks. Look, I can't get you into the city. It's not my decision. But I'll find your uncle and bring him here. Alright, that's helpful. I'll take it. Thank you, sir. Guess we'll just chill while we wait. It's been three days. Oh my god, three days? I thought it'd been like a few hours. Sure it won't be much longer. Gamlin must still be looking for us. And if he's not... What have we eaten? Where have we Wait, peed? I think someone's coming. Leandra! Damn girl, the years haven't been kind to you. Wow, this guy is a charmer. She's hugging him anyway. Let me say up front, I wasn't expecting this. So this the must be her brother, hey? Dead. I dare... Uh... I figured you'd pretty much be Ferelden for life. Oh, Gamlin. We came too late. My poor Carver didn't make it. A drastic guide. Oh, make her save me. Leandra, don't drop this on me here. I don't even know if I can help you get in. What if I ask nicely? Would it help if I said you were my favorite uncle? <laughs> it would make me feel better, but that's about it. I was hoping to grease some palms, but the Knight Commander's been cracking down. We're gonna need more grease. But what about the estate? Surely Father left something when he died? Right, uh, about the estate. It's, oh dear. Um, gone. He lost it all, it. hey? I've been meaning to write you. Then there's no hope. Lovely. But not quite. I know some people who might help. If you're not too delicate about the company you keep. So there's no family fortune? Mother said our family was wealthy. You really can't help us. I am blighted helping. I've got two offers of work from people who've got the coin to open those gates. I still can't believe you sold the estate. Gamlin, how could you? Well, I didn't expect your blasted family to show up on my doorstep. I've got a nice place in Lowtown. You'll see, it'll all work out. <sighs> I don't like this idea. What do you mean exactly, Gamlin? I talked to my contacts, and I found some people who might be willing to pay your way into the city. The catch is, you and your sister have to work off the debt. For a year. A year? A year. Me and Mama got the same thought. Do. Trust me when That's I say a long a time. refugees won't get a better option anywhere else. This is the best you could do? So you're selling us into indentured servitude? That's your idea? Think of it as having a job waiting for you in your new home. Wonderful. I managed to convince my contacts to come to the gallows to meet you personally. Miran heads up the mercenary company, the Red Iron. They're looking for recruits. The Thenril. I guess you might call her a smuggler. Either one of them can help you. All you need to do is find them in the courtyard and convince them you're worth the trouble. Bethany? What do you think about this, Bethany? We've come this far. I don't care who we work for. As long as it means we don't have to go back. I mean... Yeah, I gotta agree with you. There's no, no way but forward, so... <laughs> Alright, I'll go talk to them. Let's find them and see what they have to say. Oh, Gamlin, I don't know about this. It's a lot of coin, Leandra. Don't go expecting our name to carry the kind of weight it used to. And what of me? I will not allow others to incur debts on my behalf. <laughs> Can't see that it makes a difference. You look like a lady who can pull her own weight. Then you'll come with us. 
I have no real option. Thank you. Did we just adopt another sister? Do I have two sisters now? What are you gonna do, Mama? You're just gonna let us do all the work. Find myself begging to be allowed back into Retweet. Also, okay, glad I put on these subtitles so I can hear Mom a lot better now. <laughs> when she was talking to me earlier, I was like, I, Mother, I, I cannot hear you. Looks like uh, we might have a little bit of lore here about the gallows. Statues of tor tortured slaves fill the gallows courtyard, a ghastly memento of Kirkwall's history. 1,500 years ago, Kirkwall was the Tevinter Imperium's largest quarry, feeding the construction of the Imperial Highway. The Imperium's hunger for expansion led to legions of slaves forced into working the quarry. When the Empire's construction phase ended, Kirkwall slid naturally into its new role as the capital of the slave trade, the gallows at its heart. The statues are not monuments to the suffering of slaves. Every inch and angle of the courtyard was designed by magisters bent on breaking the spirit of newcomers. Executions here took place daily, sometimes hourly, and corpses were hung from gibbets throughout the yard. New slaves trudging in from the docks saw what awaited them. When Our Lady turned her armies against the Imperium, the slaves of Kirkwall revolted and claimed the city for themselves. The gallows stood empty for 200 years, not to be reopened until the crowning of Divine Justinia I. The gallows transformed the city again when the abandoned prison tower became the home of Kirkwall's circle. Yeah, so uh, as, as we mentioned before, this place is lovely. Take a look at the art over here. It's got a really welcoming vibe to it. Alright, so we got two options, a smuggler and a mercenary. I don't know which is which. I've forgotten already, so let's just talk to this person. Hello? I repeat, hello. There we go. <laughs> First click didn't work. Are you a Fenril? You must be Gamlin's nephew. Interesting. I don't know what he told you about us, but he certainly told us a great deal about you. He didn't say anything about me, did he? Enough to pique our interest, provided you can justify your uncle's confidence. So you're a smuggler. I'd like to know more about what we'd be doing for you. I can be honest. We don't compete with the Thieves Guild, but we keep our fingers in a lot of pots. That said, we're not killers or slavers. Anything short of that, however, is fair game. Do what you want, but this sounds fishy to me. We can't afford to be choosy. I mean, the other option is to be a mercenary where we have to be a killer. We had to choose between being a thief or or a killer, so pick your poison. You're offering a lot for us. I hear getting us into the city isn't cheap. If you're as good as your uncle claims, we're hoping you'll be worth it. After all, it's not every day we're offered an apostate services. You know Bethany is a mage? It appears our uncle likes to talk. The Templars in Kirkwall like to think they have all mages properly leashed, but when has that ever been true? We can keep them from taking notice while you're with us. Wouldn't be the first time. I mean, she seems alright, I guess. Um, we didn't even talk to the other person, but I don't know if they would be any better, so... Yeah, okay. I'll do whatever it takes. Tell me what you need done. There's a merchant named Cavril, friend of the Templars. So they let him set up his little shop here in the gallows. We supplied him in return for a piece of the take. But now, he won't pay up. We can't go near him without him screaming for the guard. But you can. Get our money from him and you're in. Alright. Just a little threatening, a little extortion. The things we do for freedom. Alright. Let's go find this guy, I suppose. Luckily, my rogue ability should come in well in this type of work. Hello? I've already told you. I can't give you any more for them. But that was everything we have. It's all we brought with us. And I feel for you, Sarah, but it's the best I can do. If they just let us into the city, I could get three times that price. <sighs> Myron? Your business is done. But... <sighs> Looks like this isn't the nicest, most honest merchant, so that makes me feel a little bit better about the work we have to do. Now then, what can I do for you, Sarah? Anthenril sent me. I believe you owe your business partners something. Oh, I see. Should I go tell the guards? Not just yet. I want to hear this. So, Ethenril sent you to collect, did she? Too cowardly to do it herself. 
Um, we'll say... You need to pay what you owe. I'm here to collect, and I'm not walking away. No, I'm not paying you thieves a single copper more. That sounds like where we come in. Follow well, so much for this uh, line of work not having any murder in it, but... I guess you win some, you lose some. <laughs> Luckily, it looks like the Guardsmen are actually helping us, which is kind of shocking. I guess they didn't like these guys either. Sick. Maybe we're doing the whole city a service. Oh no, wow, there's more. Now I'm definitely happy we got, happy we got the Guards' help. Alright, we're probably going to need someone to mop up that blood, but I think we made our point. That should be enough to pay that witch. Now I'm getting out of here. Let those guards find someone else to buy Dogland junk. Dogland? Hey now. We like dogs. Done. Alright, there's two gold in there. Guess that's uh everything we need. Hopefully someone will take care of these bodies. You're welcome, com Captain, for uh taking care of the local merchants. Here you go, as requested. Will you look at that? Tell your uncle we'll make the arrangements. Welcome aboard. Sweet. Okay. Get Wow, they disappeared. Did you see that? Now that is some good thieves. They disappeared right in front of us. I gotta learn those tricks. But anyway, looks like we've earned our keep and we should have a pass into the city now. So let's go talk to our uncle. Good old uncle who lost everything. Any luck? Yes, they've agreed to help us. I'll speak to a Athenril and see when the bribes can be made. Wait here. Then we made it. The voyage is over. Let's not do that again. No more running for our lives unless we really have to. If only Carver were here with us. And Wesley. Let's just see what happens. We have a long year ahead of us. Thus began the champion's first year in Kirkwall. Word arrived from across the sea that the hero of Ferelden had defeated the Blight. But Lothering was destroyed. Kirkwall was the champion's home now. So he remained, paying off his debt, made a name for himself in the underworld. It was a busy year in the city. That's when the Kunari landed. A great storm had caught their ship and left hundreds of warriors stranded in the city, waiting to return home. That's also when the trouble began with the mages. The Templars had become very powerful under Knight Commander Meredith. But most importantly, that's when I first met the champion. Ah, there we go. There's us. You know how many people want to hire onto this expedition? I got a new outfit. But we heard you're going into the deep roads. Surely you'll need all the help you can. No, you're too late. Already done. This is a sort of venture that can make a man for life. I'm not about to take any chances hiring random humans. We have experience. We've fought and killed Darkspawn. How many of your hired men can say the same? Get in line, human. Half of Kirkwall wants to be my best friend right now. You're looking for a quick way out of the slums, right? You and every other Ferelden in this dump. Find another meal ticket. What are we supposed to do now? We've got nothing to stop the next person who tries to sell us out. This expedition was our last chance. We'll be fine. We've made a name for ourselves this last year. We'll find something. We have to. We need coin, status, something we can hide behind. As long as we're just refugees, we're no one. 
Maybe Gamlin knows someone who can talk to Bartram for us. That might work. He always seems to know what's going on. We might as well ask. Otherwise, I don't know what we'll do. Oh, no. Seriously? Oh, wow. Thanks, Varric. Guess this is the first time we meet? You could take every coin out of your pockets just by smiling at you. But you, you don't have the style to work high down, let alone the Merchant's Guild. Might want to find yourself a new line of work. Woohoo! Off you go. Wowza! How do you do? Merrick Tethras, at your service. Nice to meet you. I apologize for Bartrand. He wouldn't know an opportunity if it hit him square in the jaw. But you would? I would. What my brother doesn't realize is that we need someone like you. He would never admit it either. He's too proud. I, however, am quite practical. Are you in the expedition? You're part of Bartrand's venture. That's right. The deep roads wouldn't normally be my thing, but I can't allow the head of our family to go down there alone. So, as you might imagine, I have more than a passing interest in this expedition's success. You know who we are? What makes you so certain we can help? You know nothing about us. Oh, on the contrary. You've made quite the name for yourself over the last year. The Coterie has been squeezing smugglers out left and right, and the only group to survive owes it all to you two. The name Hawk is on many lips these days. Not bad for a Ferelden fresh off the boat. And what about Bethany? You must have heard of my sister as well, then. Only a little. She is certainly welcome to come, but I'll leave that up to you. Frankly, I'd rather you take the credit. Okay. Thanks, well, Beth. Your secrets are safe with me. Find out what he's offering. We need a way into this expedition. Your brother refused me. He said he didn't need another guard. We don't need another hireling. We need a partner. The truth is, Bartrand's been tearing his beard out trying to fund this on his own, but he can't do it. Invest in the expedition. Fifty sovereigns and he can't refuse. Not with me there to vouch for you. You'll share the profits? Your brother doesn't seem like the sort who's willing to split profits. My brother is many things, but he is not stupid. Far better to share the profits than be trapped in a tie with a thousand dark spawn between you and the exit. Trust me, he'll come around. You'd vouch for me? Why would you stick your neck out for a complete stranger? I'd rather take a chance on someone with your reputation than head into the deep roads unprepared. And besides, we'd be your partners. I'm willing to give a little trust if you are. I don't have much coin. It sounds interesting, but if I had any gold, I wouldn't need this job. You need to think big. There's only a brief window after a blight when the deep roads won't be crawling with darkspawn. The treasure you find down there could set you and your family up for life. It won't be easy, but it's a chance. I think we have to take it. Better to work our way into this expedition than sit around waiting to be thrown in the gallows. We work together, you and I, and before you know it, you'll have all the capital you need. What do you say? Seems like a long shot. There might be nothing down there except darkspawn and rubble. How can you be sure we'll make a profit? Well, Bartrand isn't grasping its strings. He's operating on some good information. Some of the deep roads are so old, even the dwarves have forgotten them. We just need to get down there, then Bartrand will lead the way. You and I will be there to handle problems. Alright, why not? It's not like I had anything better planned. Perfect. Kirkwell's crawling with work. You set aside some coin from every job and you'll have the money in no time. Maybe Aveline can find us some work. She's got a position with the city guard now. We should talk privately when you get the chance. In the hanged man, maybe. I'll be there when I'm not with you. Now, let's go see what trouble we can stir up. Ah, All right. Down, where the rich go to piss their money away. <laughs> This really is the best place in Kirkwall. I'm glad you like it so much. All right, so it looks like Varric has now joined the party, um, which is really cool. Varric is a very handsome dwarf. It's so weird to see a dwarf without a beard, but uh, Varric is, is fully embracing it. 
So if we just pop into our codex for a moment... We have a bunch of main content quests. We need to talk to Varric in Lowtown's Hangman Pub. We need to find a way to become a partner to get the Deep Roads expedition started by bringing 50 sovereigns to Bartrand. Uh, Aveline may have information about working with the city guard. Talk to her at the barracks uh, in the Viscount's Keep. Also go to Gamlin's house in Lowtown. And we still haven't done this quest. We need to deliver Flemeth's amulet to keep her Marathari in the Dalish camp on Sundermount, which we should definitely do, because I don't want to owe any debts to a dragon. So looking further into the Codex, we do have a few other entries that I would like to touch on. First up, Varric mentioned these people, the Coterie. Let's find out who they are. Kirkwall is built on a solid foundation of greed and human suffering, and its underworld is a place where everything is for sale and everyone is fair game. There are many criminal empires within the city, some of which have been around since the Imperium used Kirkwall as a hub in the slave trade. Alliances, spying, manipulation, betrayal, and open warfare is all commonplace in the never-ending struggle for power. The Coterie is a thieves' guild that has been around for almost a century, but until recently was never a major player in the underworld. Some 20 years ago, the strongest of the local criminal empires was an ancient guild known as Sabrathon, but its leader was betrayed from within, and during the turmoil the Coterie made a successful grab for power. Since then, they've sunk their claws into almost every level of Kirkwall, including the City Guard, the Dwarven Merchants Guild, and some of the most influential citizens in the city. It's safe to say that the Coterie gets a slice of every pie, and very little goes on in Kirkwall that escapes their notice. So there you go. That's the Coterie, the local thieves' guild who have quite a lot of power. And now we can learn more about our characters. So first up is that Bertrand guy. The history of Noble, his name is Bertrand Tethras. Same as Varric, so they must be brothers or related somehow. The history of noble House Tethras stretches back to the foundation of Orzammar. The memories say that three times a child of House Tethras took the office of, assembled, of Assembly Steward. They held appointments in the Shaperate of Memories and the Shaperate of Golems. No longer. In the second year of the reign of King Endrin Adukin, Lord Anvar Tethras was found guilty before the Assembly of willfully manipulating proving matches in favor of his house. For this affront to the ancestors, he and all his house were sentenced to exile on the surface. Anvar died a mere five years later, leaving behind his lady Ilsa, ten-year-old Bartrand, and two-year-old Varric. Okay, so they are brothers. Exile, surface life, and the loss of her husband conspired against Lady Ilsa, who took to drink, leaving young Bartrand to manage what was left of House Tethris. By the time he was 15, Bartrand had doubled his family's fortune. The disgrace of House Tethris fueled his ambition, and his once noble title gave him an instant place among the Kalnas, the old money elite of the Dwarven Merchants Guild. He used it to build alliances and business ventures, as if he were a member of the Orzammar Assembly. By the time Lady Ilsa died, Bartrand had made the Tethras family one of the guild's most influential, but wealth and power on the surface couldn't sate him. He began to court alliances with the wealthiest ascendant families, branching into ba banking and mercenary companies. Guild members mutter that nothing will satisfy Bartrand but a complete reconstruction of House Tethras' estate in Orzammar, down to the rivers of lava, but built in Kirkwall. Let's learn more about Varric. Varric was born three years after his father's exile from Orzammar into the world of the Merchants' Guild. The ancestors never spoke, and paragons were the heroes in tall tales. The number of dances a Kalna lady gave to a low-born ascendant boy were more pivotal than the reign of kings. While Bartrand ran the business and drove House Tethras other, ever higher up the social ladder, Varric looked after the family and their retainers. His mother, Lady Ilsa, suffered terribly from the trauma of her disgrace in exile, finding solace in liquor and smoke. It fell to her younger son to try to curb the worst of her drunken rages, to keep her from becoming a member of pub a matter of public scandal, and to care for her when she fell ill from excesses. Though he is famous throughout the Merchants' Guild for his stories, Varric speaks rarely of himself or his family. Most of Kirkwall knows him. Everyone has bought him a drink at least once, for the sake of his fictions rather than his family connections. That is a very, very interesting backstory. A once noble dwarven house exiled to the surface. I, I like that. That's very cool. Definitely need to get to know Varric and uh, possibly Bertrand more. This is really cool. There's actually a backstory on the hero of Ferelden, which was actually our character in Dragon Age Origins. Um, I gave you guys a, a quick summary, I believe, in the last episode, but if you haven't watched our Dragon Age Origins 
um, playthrough, then this is actually a, a, a perfect little summary. So you can take a look at that. We also have a codex entry here about Flemeth, which we, we picked up on some lore on her in the first game, but I'd, I'd like to sort of refresh our memory. So let's check this one out. It says, ages ago, legend says Ban Conobar took to wife a beautiful young woman who harbored a secret talent for magic, Flemeth of Hyaber. And for a time, they lived happily until the arrival of a young poet, Osin, who captured the lady's heart with his verse. They turned to the Chazen tribes for help and hid from Conobar's wrath in the wilds until word came to them that Conobar lay dying. His last wish was to see Flemeth's face one more time. The lovers returned, but it was a trap. Conobar killed Osin and imprisoned Flemeth in the highest tower of the castle. In grief and rage, Flemeth worked a spell to summon a spirit into this world to wreak vengeance upon her husband. Vengeance she received, but not as she planned. The spirit took possession of her, turning Flemeth into an abomination. A twisted, maddened creature, she slaughtered Conobar and all his men and fled back into the wilds. For a hundred years, Flemeth plotted, stealing men from the Chazen to sire monstrous daughters. Horrific things that could kill a man with fear. These corkery witches led an army of Chazen from the wilds to strike at the Alamari tribes. They were defeated by the hero Cormac, and all the witches burned, so they say. But even now, the wilders whisper that Flemeth lives on in the marsh, and she and her daughters steal those men who come too near. Morgan's mother saved the last Grey Wardens from death at the top of the Tower of Ishel. But just who or what Flemeth truly is, is a mystery. Sounds like she may be an abomination, like a she's been possessed by a demon, but she can also turn into a dragon. She's also immortal. She she has children. She sacrifices them for more life. There's there's a lot going on with Flemeth, which hopefully we'll we'll learn more. All right, so back in the city, I guess we'll go look around for all those quests that we have. Talk to her uncle. Talk to some other people. There's Bartrand again with his expedition hirings. Looks like this must be like the dwarven quarter of the city, because we've got some cool dwarven statues here, and a lot of dwarves, so... Oh my god! Look who it is! It's Bodon and Sandal! Bodan Fedic, purveyor of goods, both common and rare, at your service. And this is my son, Sandal, who is as brilliant an enchanter as you'll ever find. Say hello to the nice human, Sandal. Hi, Sandal! Hello. We shall be accompanying your expedition and I love it. I love seeing some familiar faces. It's exciting, isn't it? Dangerous too. You aren't worried about venturing into such a dangerous place. Not with such fine protection. <laughs> but I digress. Do you wish to peruse my wares or perhaps make use of Sandal's unique talents? Enchantment? <laughs> Just so. Enchantment. How'd you guys end up here? You two don't seem the sort to hire onto this expedition. My son and I have never played it safe. Never captured a tried and true rose. In fact, we have just returned from adventures while accompanying the hero of Paralden, legendary Grey Warden and Vanquisher of the Blight. You knew the hero of Ferelden? So you helped to defeat the Blight? In our small way, perhaps. We did not fight at the Grey Warden's side, of course. The hero of Ferelden is a fine man. After all his accomplishments, may he find even greater success. Ah, but surely my past is hardly of interest to the likes of you. It was very of interest. It was great to see you guys. All right, well, that was lovely to see some familiar faces. Man, someone's got to get to weeding here. We got some some weeds sprouting up. I thought the refugees were keeping to low town. Okay, excuse me, ma'am. Seem to like your brother very much. And here I thought it took blood magic to read minds. I had a twin brother, Carver. He used to nail my braid to the bed while I was sleeping. What, Carver? That is so rude. Sorry about your brother. Hey, you want mine? I got a spare. I mean, the city's kind of nice, I guess. We got some nice vine foliage. Where exactly are we? This is high town, so this is like the nicest part of town. So that that checks out. I think we actually have some lore right here. 
At the height of the Tevinter Imperium slave trade, Kirkwall's elite prospered beyond dreams of avarice. Hightown was built for the wealthiest slavers, its glitzy mansions rising atop a great wall of rock that borders on one side the Waking Sea. Lowtown cowered on its other side, until Kirkwall's slaves rose to plunder and destroy Hightown's riches. Today, Hightown's prominent buildings are the Keep, home to the ruling Viscount, and the Chantry, home to the Grand Cleric and the city's religious center. Both are converted estates that once housed wealthy magisters, rebuilt and converted after the uprising. Pardon me. There you go, a little history lesson. Now over here, this is the Chantry. I'm sure Bethany doesn't love uh, being here. Sebastian, stop this madness. The Chantry cannot condone revenge, Sebastian. It is my right, my duty, to show these assassins there is nowhere in the free marches to hide. This is murder. No. What happened to my family was murder. All right, looks like Sebastian has a flair for the dramatic. Let's go find out what he put up there. A grave crime was committed against all free-thinking men and women in the Free Marches. The ruling Vale family in Starkhaven, my family, was brutally murdered down to the youngest babe in arms. This massacre was carried out by members of the Flint Mercenary Company. I hereby offer a bounty on the head of each Flint Company soldier in the Kirkwall vicinity. From Prince Sebastian Vale. Ooh, he's a prince. Okay, well, we'll pick that up. And uh, if we see any mercenaries, I guess we'll we'll take them out. Yeah, I I'm surprised the Chantry allowed him to put that up. But anyway, it's very nice in here. Look at all these statues. Robes by Jean Luc. Fancy. This is the High Town Market. There's lots of stories here. Olaf's Armory, Hubert's Fine Goods. Oh, and someone named Worthy who looks like he has a quest for us. Hello, I like your name. Long time no see, my friend. Worthy, when did you get back into town? Oh, uh, just a month or so ago. Things didn't work out in Orzammar. You aren't still working for Athenral, are you? Your year must be up by now. I'm on my own. Yes, I'm done with that. Good for you. Always nice to see someone striking out on their own. I'll tell you what. I still have my old contacts. You need some rune crafting done, I can arrange it for you. Take care, Hawk. Don't get dead. Don't get dead. I will try my best. We have unlocked a crafting station from which you can order items given a recipe and resources. Order runes. Cool. You can order runes if you discover the right combination of resources along with the recipe. Looks like I did have no resources, but uh, <laughs> good to know that we, we could craft things in theory. I was actually wondering if if our one year of, of servitude was up, but by the looks of that dialogue, it is, so that's good to know. And I guess that makes sense, then, why we're trying to fund our own expedition. Because we, we need to find work on our own. So, okay, looking at the map, doesn't look like there's anything else up here in Hightown, so let's head uh, to the Viscount's Keep for the A Friend in the Guard quest. Well, I guess that is still up, in, up here in Hightown. Whoa, look at this door! That is so cool! Talk about extra, okay. Walk in through the eagle to the Viscount's Keep. Yeah, this place is nice. Now, where will we find our friend Abilene? How much longer do I have to wait? There she is. And apparently this is her home base. Aveline. Hello, Hawk. She doesn't Been seem very excited to see us. What? Oh, right. Sorry. It feels like we just talked. I've been keeping an eye on you. Information Spooky. is one of the few perks of this job. Watch out for Bartrand. He's a son of a bitch. You were spying on me again? You know I don't like it when you have people watch me. Saved me camping on your doorstep. After what we went through to get here, uh... Well, you're no child, but I take care of my friends. Oh, that's the nice. The they have me patrolling, I've got time. 
Did you eavesdrop anything useful? A person in your position seems like they might learn some profitable things. You know better than to ask that. One day you'll be frustrated enough to go for it. It's like I'm sitting on my hands. There are dangerous people in this city. In fact, I might have a job for you. Let me know if you want to do a favor for Kirkwall. Otherwise, I'm here if you need me. Maker knows I could use more satisfying work. Sounds like she's not exactly happy as her jo uh, with her job, but I guess we'll just straight up ask her because we're blunt and to the point like that. Are you happy here? Seems like Kirkwall suits you. It has been a challenge. Lots of opportunity. If you're the type the locals want. Are you? If you argue enough, you kind of convince yourself. Do you miss being a soldier? This must be a very different pace from serving King Caelan. I love that life. But there's a new king for a new Ferelden. Seems cocksure. But I guess he was there when the Archdemon fell. Can't fault an active hand. It's just one more change, though. The real end for me was Ostagar. You and Carver must have felt something similar. I don't know if that's right to say. I barely knew him. We didn't really talk about it. I don't dwell on it. I guess we had that in common. Then I would have liked him. Would you return to Ferelden? The blight is over. You could go back to Lothering. That wasn't home for me. It was just where the Horde pressed us. It wasn't the first village I saw fall. But you don't get used to people losing everything. It was sad to leave that way. It's not how I wanted to say goodbye. I'll say that. You can't go home again. That's supposed to be about maturity. It's not the same if you don't have the option. Alright, well, enough small talk. What's this job you have for us? Alright, Aveline. You have something worth doing. My patrols may be empty walks in the dark, but there's something big coming up, and I could use you. An ambush, probably for a caravan, although I can't find any shipments that match up. Doesn't matter, though. I women waiting for someone to rob. I'm putting a stop to it, my district or not. Uh, how did you find out? You've been nosing around outside your commission. I have contacts, and they're complaining about a lack of meat. Thugs and such. Someone is hiring. And one or two were told to prepare for travelers. You want to be good at this job? You pay attention to what's missing and when people arrange escape routes. Fair enough. Um, you can hire civilians? I'm no guard, Aveline. There's only so many of us. Temporary recruits are expected time to time, as long as they're competent. You still claim to be competent, right? Okay, well that's convenient. We were looking for a job. This should get us some coin, help us work with an old friend, and, you know, do good. Help some people. Let's do it. Aveline, you've got yourself a partner. I knew I could count on you. They're hidden up Sundermount, remote and rough, but we can make good time with a shortcut this side. And no, you can't run off and do it without me. I trust you, but I have to be there. You're acting on behalf of the guard. Guess that's a subtle way of saying we need Abilene in the party before we can complete the quest. Indeed. Investigate this shield here and learn some more information about the Kirkwall city guard. It is with pride that I, your Viscount, grant the authority of law and civil enforcement upon the guardsmen of an independent Kirkwall. No more will we defer to the will of foreign troops or draw a holy order into tasks unbefitting their mandate. These proud men and women will be of the people and will enforce the laws we have elected for a civil and ordered society. And should the specter of invasion return, the noble guardsmen will conscript from the population. For who better to amass the people's will than the constables of law charged with its inspection? Cool. All right. Well, looks like we've got our first job. We also have a party of four again. I guess we need to introduce uh, Aveline and, and Varric at some point. But for now, uh, we will call it a day there. Clearly, we are only just scratching the surface of this game, guys. I could keep playing this forever, but I'd rather not have this be a two-hour episode. So we'll call it a day for here. Can't wait to pick up next time, explore more about the city, and maybe earn some gold. Thanks, everyone, so much for watching, and I'll see you again real soon.